Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 409 for Tuesday, the 21st of July, 2015. So great to see you. Welcome, everybody. Nice to have you here. I'm Kelsey. I'm Robbie. Tonight, we have got an unboxing for you. We're looking at the James Donkey 007. You've seen it on the show before, but it's finally a real thing, not just photos and digital renders. We've got an actual James Donkey 007 uh, gaming mouse. This is the modular gaming mouse. You want to stick around. This is some high-tech stuff. Woo! Over to the newsroom! Sasha, how are you? I am great. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. It is now illegal in the UK, again, to copy CDs or DVDs you've bought to put into your MP3 player, your computer, or other devices. It's being called the tech divorce of the decade. PayPal has parted ways from eBay. Two hackers have been awarded free flights after discovering and reporting a security issue with United Airlines' website. IBM plans to take on the, li the Linux server market with IBM Power Systems. And several large retailers have shut down their online photo printing websites following a possible data breach at a third-party photo service. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm your co-host, Kelsey Jensen. Nice. Okay, well, we got this far, and uh, we've got an exciting show in store for you tonight. Also, we've got a ton of viewer questions, I suppose, yes, that have been have coming into the mailbag. Very many. And if we've you know helped you out in any way over any episode, just maybe consider dropping a little donation to the tip jar. We would really appreciate that. <laughs> And thanks to those who have uh, yes. thus far. Um, I'm really uh, excited about Patreon. Patreon's a really cool platform. Um, we're a little late to the Patreon game. I recognize that. And I think that uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a slow process to get mm -hmm. that snowball rolling. But those of you who are right there out the gate uh, supporting us with Patreon, uh, we really greatly appreciate that. If you haven't already checked it out, go to patreon.com slash category five. It's a really cool way to support the show. Yes, please do that. And of course, Category 5 is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, cat5.tv slash IAIB. Doing our best to keep up with the chat room tonight. Nice to see so many friendly faces. Wow, there's lots of people Lots there. of people from all over the world. I see Whiskey Zero there as well uh, as Taylor, Coraz, Caras, and uh, Torx. And there, there's too many of you to make mention of everybody. There's but, lots of uh, people. we got Dennis Kelly joining us tonight, Dave Maydu. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, DJ Quad. And we've got GWG joining us. And Leland, back for another round of Category 5. Yes, we've got Cool Dude. You're pretty cool. Dude. <laughs> JWMP, I see you there. And uh, Life of Pi, of course, always a pleasure. Nua, joining us in the chat room. Smokey uh, Joe, Rob Shad. Sparkly nice balls. I know that I can't, I, I can't go through them all, folks, but uh, welcome. And if you are not already in the chat room, get on over to Category 5 on Freenode, and that's one way that you can interact with us live uh, i was saying to sasha before the show how cool is it that we can interact with you in real time live some of you are watching this on youtube some of you are watching this on demand or on your roku after the fact mm -hmm. uh, but truly being able to communicate in real time with people that uh, are broadcasting from barry ontario to the world it's really kind fun. of a cool thing yeah it's really exciting 
Speaking of exciting, we've got an exciting unboxing for you tonight. Can we get some unboxing music, please? Thank you. Okay, the James Donkey 007 has arrived it's in shrink wrap. It's so pretty. <gasps> it's a box. <sighs> and you know what we do with boxes around here. We open them. Yeah. <laughs> That's how the internet works, right? Okay, so let's see here. We've got a nice little... Well, there's, I think there's a Mandarin or... Well, these are, these are made by a small group of folks. James Donkey. There they are. And uh, they are just passionate gamers, passionate about uh, creating hardware that allows you to play the game in, uh, in a fun way. And they really focus on just literally having fun. Mm -hmm. I like that. I mean, yes. so many companies get so caught up in Money. just trying to yeah, create the next best thing. They've done it. But they've done it in such a way that they're just they're gamers just wanting to create something that's the best that it can possibly be. So are we ready for this? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. This is the James Donkey 007. Uh, you remember? Oh. Oh, there's nothing oh. there. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. Climatic. <laughs> Climatic. Whatever you call it. All right. Well, it's a piece of paper. Oh! Nope, not yet. No. Oh, okay. Well, we've got that and that. <laughs> okay. uh, we took a look at this. Uh, Sasha actually brought up the 007 on her show, the Category 5.TV Newsroom. I'm working at it. Episode number 393, if you didn't see it. You ready for it? Oh. There is an exceptional piece of equipment right there. The James Donkey 007 is a modular mouse, so that means that you can actually create up to 54 different configurations to suit whatever kind of gameplay that you're doing. Well, that's impressive. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to put it together? Nicely packed. Yeah, you want to put it together? Yeah. There it is. That's what it looks like, folks. One of the first 500 ever created. All right. That's so fancy. Yeah. Okay, so how do we do this? Okay, we get it out like that. Okay. There's really, uh, other okay, than I'm that sheet, this. there's not a lot of a, a lot to it. You see that the back here, it, it's got a nice little stand. Oh, and you're dropping everything. That does not magnetically hold the things in, however... <laughs> I suppose Maybe a design flaw on the packaging. Well, you could just keep it level if I wasn't holding it up so ridiculously. Yeah, Robbie, why'd you do that for? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, here, you help me get this okay. stuff out. Yeah, yeah. I've got a single piece of tape back here okay. to pull that out. Well, no, it has to go through the thing. Yeah, I, well, I know, but let's, let's look at this as we go. Okay, Adam, can we, can we get in nice and tight on that? That is nice. This is a good quality... Well, don't break fully it. Wrapped. Well, I'm saying you can't. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the, the detail of that at home, uh, but that's a fully woven um, outer casing on the cord, and it's tight. Like You can feel that. You can see what oh, I yeah. mean about it. It's much better quality than yeah, typical mouse. Yeah, fairly fancy. Cool. Robbie's all excited. So if you haven't seen it yet, go over to cat5.tv slash 007. That's 007. And uh, you folks were a big part of making this possible because uh, Sasha brought this up on her show, the Category 5.tv newsroom, and uh, it was thanks to contributions from people like yourself that uh, were able to make the uh, plausible uh, fundraiser take place. They were hoping to raise about $8,000 to make this thing happen yeah. and uh, actually more than doubled that. That's so, pretty good. Uh, more than enough to get it on the market. Uh, you'll see here there's uh, actually an indicator and I'm gonna, we're going to get Adam to plug this in for us so that we can actually uh, get a good look at it lit up. But the DPI is adjustable. And you can adjust the DPI all the way up to 8,400 dots per inch. Now, what does that matter? Uh, what does that mean? Well, Sorry. it's the resolution of the mouse. So it's, an ac it's actually a laser mouse, okay. very precise, very high quality. So if you're doing uh, gaming, for example, you can get really, really fast movement. Because even the slightest little movement can be a whole spin. Uh, yeah. For graphic design, for example, you, yeah. you want something that can be very, very precise and adjustable so that you can get in really, really close and edit around the sides of images and things like that. Right. So it, it actually lets you do that as well. It's adjustable up to 8,400 DPI. And I'm assuming that's really good. It's very good, yeah. Where do we start? Okay, so this is our left wing here. So with the packaging, it's all laid out. Left wing is our thumb. Mm -hmm. This is a right-handed only mouse at this point. Uh, no word yet if Sorry, there's going lefties. to be a left-handed version out. Yeah, Sorry but, about that. Uh, as it is, it's a uh, right-handed mouse. 
So left wing is basically where your thumb is going to go. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that each of the wings actually has a different configuration, not only as far as the look and the shape goes uh, for comfort, but it also has different button um, options. So this one, for example, has a nice little button right on my thumb, whereas this one here has a button that I guess I would push with kind of the, the ball of my thumb, hmm. which would be good for maybe a flight sim or something like that. So, so let's start with, uh, with this guy here. And if you've got, you know, everybody's got different shape and sized hands, and uh, so this really makes it kind of customizable and modifiable. So check right. this out. Feel that. That's not coming out anytime soon. Not at all. Not a lot of effort to put it together, eh? No. It's fairly light at this moment, too. Actually, I think that this one is more the ball of your thumb. Yeah? Yeah, the, like the yeah, down Yeah, kind of like the, the inner part of your thumb. Yeah. Sure. That okay, one so be. right wing. Again, uh, really makes it adjustable. We've got a hook attachment so that we can, you know, great for, uh, you know what that's good for? Let's stick it on there and see if you can guess. You're playing games or doing graphic editing, and w what's one of the things that you quite often have to do when you hit the edge of your mouse pad or y your surface? Oh, you have to bring it back. Yeah, you got to so bring it back, and so you lift up your mouse, right? Yes. So you get this hook feature. How hard? How much easier does that make it? Yeah. See that? So this is just one of the accessories um, that's interchangeable. So you just pull it right off and. It snaps on with magnets, high-powered magnets. And that's pretty decent. you can hold your mouse just with your, your pinky. So that's cool. And then, uh, of course, we all have different sized hands and how we're going to hold the mouse is going to vary based on mm -hmm. how big our hands are. Uh, so we've got the different sized uh, palms as well. So these, I don't think any of those have buttons. They're just literally just for different sized hands. Yeah. Makes it a little bit more comfortable. And you can see that they just everything just snaps in. It doesn't even snap. It just it pulls itself in, just like mm -hmm. that. That's cool. real cool. Could we, could we plug this in, Adam, and see, uh, see what it looks like lit up? That'd be all right. As soon as he works his way over. Here we go. I think that'll reach. Hopefully. Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, the moment of truth. <laughs> oh, I it's hope in? not. Yeah, Kay. it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we've got some LEDs around the, uh, the base here. This is our unboxing, so this is happening in real yeah. time. I've never, I've never seen it. So, got some LEDs around the bottom, and uh, we've got the indicator here that shows. Oh, I don't know if you could see that. Can we see in here? You guys make that out at home? What's it doing? It's kind of doing the Psy Tech, waving back and forth, waiting for me to set my DPI. Let's see. Did you, I think it happened once or twice there that you could see it at home. I suppose we should probably like look at the instructions at this point, eh? Yes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I'm moving that around. Robbie's having fun. That looks nice. Okay, so let's take a quick boo here. Okay, DPI is in the middle here. So we've got two buttons here. Let me see it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So adjusting our DPI. Can you guys see the funky LED effects that are going on here? Oh, yeah, I see it. There we go. We just got to get the right angle because it's just the way the cameras work. Look at that. So I'm at about half the resolution of the mouse. And that feels pretty speedy. Very, very nice. You can feel that too. Just don't click anything because we're on the live, <laughs> plugged into the live server. So all of a sudden we're... Whoa. Feels pretty good, eh? Yeah. It's not too bad. Got a little base here. I don't know what this one does. Does it say on the instructions? Um, or is it just for setting it down? And Nah, there's more to it than that. Base. So basically, I mean, it is it's fully modular. You've got the ability to change the design and the usability of the mouse itself. Well, I think you can change there we the go. bottom of it. So change take, the bottom. Take, take this Even, one off? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh look at that. Oh. There we go. That one's like a more of a metallic It's got one. a metallic surface, so good for... Now, this is a laser mouse, so it's not like your typical optical mouse that Versus. is going to have trouble on certain surfaces. This is going to work absolutely beautifully. Um, 
pretty much any surface that you can put it on. It, it doesn't have a light shooting out the bottom like a, an optical mouse. And you can see here's what we just changed. I don't know if you could see, but it's completely customizable. Uh, it is programmable as well. So there are four different programs that you can set up in the mouse itself. So if you want to set up different profiles for different games, different programs that you're using, uh, you can actually do that in the James Donkey 007 as well. Um, check out that particular product. Go to cat5.tv slash 007 to learn more about it. What else can we tell you about the 007? It, let's get into some tech, techno babble stuff. It's, uh, it's really high-end, spectacular top-of-the-line features. It's got a nice uh, chipset. It's got the uh, Avago uh, A9800 chip. That's the step up from... Now, you remember the older chips? They had some problems with some of the re resolution. This is the fixed chip. So this is the, the good one. Uh, it's got Omron 20 million sensitivity switches. So the buttons are... You've got nice sensitivity on those. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, up to 30G acceleration. So mean? if you're playing games and you crank up the DPI, you're going to get uh, a, a really nice acceleration on that mouse. Perfect for gaming. Perfect for graphic design. Sashi, you've got a question. I I ha tell. Well, I have just a comment to make yeah. about this awesome mouse. Okay, so you might be a gamer and you'd want this. You might be a graphic de no, designer no. and want this. <laughs> no might be. Come on. Okay, <laughs> but you could also work at your computer every day, all day, and want a super cool mouse, right? Sure. Like sometimes if I'm doing a mundane job, I want something absolutely fabulous to get me through. <laughs> that is a stellar piece of art. If you put that on your desk, holy, I think all the, I like it. Certainly the cosmetic. Be, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Be, it's, <laughs> be, it's You're using Microsoft Word <laughs> and this is your mouse. That would, that would probably be me. It does make me think, Sasha. I, I get clicker's cramp, I call it quite a bit. And I wonder if just the interchangeability of parts being able to go like this and say, okay, you know what? That one's hurting me right now because I'm at the computer all the time and being able to swap it out for another piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you hear that? No. Did it make an, a cool noise? Did it vibrate? It vibrated. <laughs> It has vibration features. Do you see that anywhere on it? Uh, this is a, a feature that we didn't even know about. Look at that. That's hysterical. That's pretty awesome for gaming. So vibration feedback as you get your headshots. How awesome is that? Okay, what else have we got? Um, I mentioned the, the programmability of it. It's got six different modes as well. You can see the just the, the build quality is actually really, really good. These components appear to be uh, a good solid plastic. Yeah. They're not, uh, they don't seem flimsy in any not sense, but they're all. not metal. They look metallic, yes. but they are not metal. I think metal. it's just the paint, though. Yeah. But they look, feel great. Yeah. It's a nice, shiny, glossy it's finish. It's um, The um, pieces are replaceable, of course, so if something gets broken, easy to get that replaced. And Because there's three other ones, it. typically. Well, that's the thing, too. Um, and if we can see here, I don't know if you can get in there, each of these parts has not just the magnetic component, but also the digital component to tell the mouse what features you're going to be utilizing. So you see these pins here are actually probably what's telling it to, hey, in, this one's got a vibration system built into it. So when I put that on there, there we go, it's just vibrated in my hand. So do any of these have, this one also has a digital interface see what that one does if if it does anything that i can tell you right away it doesn't do anything that i can feel does it show what the different butts do well i don't know about the butts but it's going to be experimental to learn all the different features of it how cool is that yeah Groovy. Okay, well, there it is. It's the James Donkey 007, up to 54 different configurations. I think you're honestly going to have a lot of fun just uh, messing with it and clicking in different parts yes. and seeing how it works. And, and uh, it feels like a really good quality mouse as well. And like I say, the guys at James Donkey, everybody over at James Donkey have worked really hard to uh, bring this to us so that, you know, you've got a mouse that is smoking. That's just I love being able to change the DPI on the fly. I know you guys can't see on the screen, but I'm changing how quickly my cursor moves with just a little bit of a, a movement. I think that will also, from an ergonomic standpoint, being able to increase your DPI so that 
just a little nudge will make it so that it moves halfway across your screen. That's got to make a big difference. This will make it onto many, many Christmas lists. I think Absolutely. So. So lots of wish lists. We're planning I'm for sure, that already. I'm yeah. sure nice. Adam already has it on his. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you've got it on yours. Cat5.tv slash 007. In, right? It doesn't go in that no, one? No. Well, it, it, it was, it's got, it's got a, well, it's got a thing because on the front, yeah. it's got like a more of a... Oh, yeah. Thing. It's a different Ooh, shape. Instead of this one? Yeah. Oh, careful. So. You're clicking on stuff. What did you click on? Oh, no. We're broadcasting something else. Ah. Ah. I think we're good. <laughs> You're click, clickety click. <laughs> Closes the broadcast. Sorry for the premature end of the show. <laughs> well, there you have it. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the URL, cat5.tv slash 007. And uh, we are going to modify that link as this mouse becomes publicly available. So yes. right now, this is a kind of a pre-release so that we could show it to you. And, uh, oh, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> seriously, you're making me nervous. A bunch of stuff just happened on the computer. But it, <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a great idea. What? Can you move these buttons? Can you, no, no, okay. No. Carefully, carefully. <laughs> when this comes I'm, out to the public market, we're going to make sure that that link, cat5.tv slash 007, is going to take you somewhere that you can actually pick up one of those James Donkey 007s. That is sweet. That is sweet. I'm, I'm honestly, I was terrified I was going to break something just then. <laughs> <laughs> Not break that, but clicking on the wrong thing. For yeah, sure. or, or even that. I, like, don't have a, I don't really have anywhere else to plug it into. We could plug it into your laptop and you can yeah. use it for the rest of the show. You want to do that? Sure, let's Adam, do that. Adam, shall we? Just going to zoom out first. <laughs> <laughs> Da, 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 da. Back to the, the nice music. There we go. Thanks, man. Now gonna, if she breaks anything, it's her own. Well, now we gotta... Are we gonna plug it in? Gonna plug Just it? right in the side. Oh, in the side. Oh. oh. Okay, I will plug it. You can move that one aside. Maybe I'll have my revenge and I'll click it a few times while we... <laughs> well, don't do that. There we go. Oh, that's fun. All right, we're back. Yeah. Feels good, eh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> We've got lots of viewer questions uh, tonight. Yes. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first we're going to get into like a little thing about Patreon. I know we talked about them a little bit. Yeah. Um, so this is from Whiskey Zero. He says, thanks hey, for the Zero. Patreon shout out last night. Was surprised to hear my real name instead of my neck. That's okay, no problem, just surprised. Been watching the Patreon signups and sad to see so few Patreons so f patrons so far. Sure hope you get a whole bunch more. I thought the bonus viewer points was a good incentive and great idea. I have recently added a server on my home... Ele Land-based free BSD for Apache. I think that's how you pronounce it. Am I Apache. It? Apache, FTP and MTP services. Works great, rock solid, stable, and wasn't too hard of learning of a learning curve for to make the install. BSD is a whole lot different from Linux. Good exercise for my senior citizen brain. <laughs> I'm sure you're not that old. Have you ever done a, a program discussion about system ports and how to test to see if any internet-facing ports are open to the world? Could be an interesting security topic. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, as f well, first of all, yeah, cool to play around with different flavors of you know Unix derivatives. BSD being um, a, an alternative to Linux, mm -hmm. Linux being an alternative to everything else, <laughs> kind of idea. Um, yeah, lots of fun. Uh, Apache. Just to bring that up, Apache is a web server software so that you can have um, websites hosted on your, your own personal server. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what a lot of the internet is based on, is running on. So when you go to a website, you're quite likely looking at something that's hosted on an Apache server. Um, as far as ports go, Whiskey Zero on Linux, on FreeBSD, it's, it's not really any different. Until you open up a port, it's really not vulnerable. Linux has a different approach than some other operating systems that shall remain nameless in that um, until you install software that opens a port, it's just the, the port doesn't exist kind of idea. So if I, for example, am worried about port 21, FTP, well, if I don't have an FTP server service running on my server, port 21 is not there. It's not receiving connections. It's not replying to those connections. Um, Similarly, your Apache, for example, port 80, port 443, if you're using SSL, um, those ports are not open until you configure a virtual host on those ports. So it's kind of cool that way. That said, there are times when it's very necessary to have ports open and also protect yourself against um, hack attacks and things like that, brute force attacks. And, 
and stuff. I'll go like that because there's a fly. We, need, like, we have fly a fly over. in the studio, everybody. Yeah, we had the windows, uh, the doors open earlier. So, um, so there's a program called CSF slash LFD. CSF slash LFD. It's something that I would definitely recommend that you get a look at. Let's just get into their website so that I can bring it up for you. Da, da. How's your new mouse? It's nice. Yeah. It's fancy. I like that you can change the size of it by changing parts. Yes. I used to have this mouse, the thermal take uh, mouse, on the co-host computer. Yeah. And people had trouble with it because I guess I've got bigger hands than, yeah, than it's some a, people. Yeah. That one's more adjustable. Yeah. So how cool. Okay. Config server dot com slash cp slash csf dot html or just go to config server dot com and you'll find it. Uh, this is a program that you can install on your server and it's basically a firewall on, uh, on steroids, I'll say. It's the dream firewall because what happens is, is that um, it monitors all traffic that's going through your computer on all ports that you configure it to monitor. So port 21, port 80, port 443, whatever it is. And as things happen, you can control through scripts what happens mm -hmm. if people hit those ports. If it's a legitimate port, port 80 is Apache for standard web hosting, for example. And somebody's whacking away at it, and you've got a whole bunch of 404 errors. You might say, well, maybe I messed up in my code, but... Okay, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Oh, good. At least it's over to you now. Is this good luck? Uh, Adam's not even looking. <laughs> it was on my nose. <laughs> Where was I? That was distracting. Right <laughs> As I hit my keyboard and shut everything else down. <laughs> he likes me anyways. <laughs> Could have been worse. Oh, I hit it. Did you? Yeah, I did. Oh, great. We're going to never see the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Memories of Obama. Uh, um, with CSF LFD, you can say, okay, if somebody's whacking away at a port with a port scan, if people are finding, I was going to use the 404 error, that's uh, a good example of somebody who's trying to find scripts on your website, say FS, or FCK editor, and trying to brute for, or trying to find ways to, to exploit your server. So 404s are one way to, that you can detect those kind of attacks. Um, port scans, brute force attacks, DDoS attacks. It can intercept those, stop them, and then it will monitor and say, okay, this person is still whacking away at that port, and it will actually block their IP address completely. Ooh. So, hey, if you offended CSF LFD, all of a sudden, you can no longer access my port 80, port 443, port 21, doesn't matter, you have no access left. Um, so it's a great tool uh, for your server. Um, Learning curve isn't so bad, I don't yeah. think. From a to get started, you install it. It's got some defaults already pre-configured. Look into your slash etc slash csf folder, and you'll see the csf.comp file, and you'll be able to configure um, the script, and it's all well commented. Uh, beyond that, Cloudflare is a cool product. Um, Cloudflare offers um, a free version of their service at cloudflare.com, and what it does is it works on the DNS level. So it doesn't, if, if you're giving out your IP address, it doesn't block anything from that. But mm -hmm. if you've got a .com, for example, that routes to Apache on your server, it will intercept that .com traffic and it will cross-reference it, cross-check it against blacklists, and it will say, hey, this guy is known for spamming. So if you've got it configured to block spammers, it will stop them dead in their tracks. If they're known to be a hacker or a brute force attack or a DDoS attack, it will stop them dead in their tracks at the DNS level. So it never actually hits your server. It doesn't get there. So that's another uh, cool way to be able to stop uh, abuse on your server as well. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm. I think uh, before we get into more questions, Sasha Dermatis is over there in the newsroom. I Oh, you got more I fun? do. I just have one little quick comment about the mouse because uh, Leland had said... A while back, he had sent in a news story about the vibrating pen for Parkinson's users. Yes. So if there is a Parkinson's feedback sort of ability in that mouse, if they can modify it in a way, it really would open up functionality yeah. for Parkinson's users as well, which is awesome. I wonder how that could work. Because the pen... Does the pen not vibrate in order to counteract 
like in a counteractive m movement mm -hmm. to yeah. the, the vibration of the person's hand. Right, so if you were to change the sensitivity of the mouse, because you can, yeah. right? And then maybe had a vi I don't know how it works as far as Parkinson's patients go. But I, w I, I would think that that would require an accelerometer as well because it would have to sense your m movement. But a mouse doesn't have an accelerometer, but it does have the, the laser yeah. optics. I don't know. We, we could Curious send, thought, we could send that, that, that thing into, that, that idea into James Donkey and say, hey, look. See what they say. You, you could add this to one of your mouse, one I think, of your mice things. I, I think the idea behind the vibration feedback is when you're gaming and stuff like that and something hits you or, you, you know, you're doing mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. in a game then you get that responsive kind of tactile feel whether or not it could be used to assist um, making it easier for Parkinson's users uh, that would remain to be seen good thought though interesting you ready for it Sasha I'm ready all right all right it's Tuesday July 21st 2015 and here are the stories we're covering this week it is once again illegal to make personal copies of music or movies in the UK. PayPal shares rise following their split from eBay. US airline, airline United has rewarded two hackers who spotted security holes in its website with a million free flight miles each. IBM is going after the Linux server market in full force. And due to a data breach, Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, and more have taken their online photo printing sites offline. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. You've got mad skills. Now hone them. Learn new skills or improve your existing ones with online video tutorials and training from lynda.com through our special link at cat5.tv slash lynda. Learn software, technology, creative, and business skills you can use today to help you achieve your professional goals. Join today and start learning. We'll give you this chance to try it absolutely free with unlimited access to all of the courses. Sign up now for free, cat5.tv slash linda. I'm Sasha Dermatis, and here are the top stories from the Category5.tv newsroom. It's now illegal in the UK, again, to, buy, or to copy CDs or DVDs that you've bought to put onto your MP3 player, your computer, or other devices. The government had introduced a new law in October last year, meaning it was legal to transfer your music onto your home library. But that law has been overturned in the High Court. It's after a legal challenge from BASCA, the Musicians' Union, and industry representatives UK Music. It's unclear how the change will be enforced. Court action was rare under the previous law, and the industry often turned a blind eye to people copying data for personal use. The new ruling, which overturns the copyright and rights performance law, which permitted personal copies for private use, affects CDs, MP3s, DVDs, Blu-ray, and eBooks. It means consumers can't technically copy a CD that they own and use one version in their car and the other in their home. The law brought in the law brought in October made it legal to make backups for personal use, but it also remains an offense to share those copies with friends and family or to sell that music or data. The change in the law also had implications for teachers who use copyright materials on interactive whiteboards and writers who quote from so other sources. So that means if you were really if you wanted a CD for your home, you couldn't put it on a, your phone even, or your MP3 player, bring it into your car and listen to it on your stereo there. That's nuts. You would have to buy it twice, the same album. That's nuts. But that's I, iTunes, it has a feature. That's iTunes. <laughs> iTunes is for Apple users, Kelsey. <laughs> no offense. Some of us ha do I don't it. have an iDevice to... But that aside, non-proprietary... Yes. Being yes. able to buy a CD. Okay, here's an example. For my birthday, I got, because it was my birthday, by the way, and there's still time to send things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got a, a Magic CD from, from Becca because I wanted it because I've heard them on the radio and I like them. And so I'm still old-fashioned that way. I like to get a CD. What's the first thing I do? Because I don't have a CD player. Put it on your phone. Put it on my MP3 player. Oh, MP3 player. I'm, I'm old school that way, too. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't have iTunes and all that fancy fandangled stuff because I like to have control over my library. So it goes into an MP3 file on my MP3 player, and I can push play when I want, where I want. 
Okay, well, shouldn't the, matter the what device. For the people no. who use iTunes, you will know that there's there's a feature where you plug it, you put in your CD into You're your computer. I am. Yeah. Oh, where you put in your CD to. to but your, that's illegal to now. Your computer. In the UK. In the UK. Yeah. in the UK. But they have a feature that that says like you you yeah, do this. Yeah, features. Apple's selling says that hey our Mac, iMacs have CDRWs so that you can drive so that you can actually burn mm-hmm. your own copies now you're not allowed I Sorry, find UK. I find it interesting that they would make this an illegal act with no way to properly enforce it because truthfully if I buy something and I put it onto my phone or my MP3 player how are they going to track that unless they pull me over, check, and then ask to see licensing certificates? It's ludicrous. It, oh, there's, ludicrous. There's no way to, to like, why? What do you think? Why? I think I should have the right, if I buy a CD or get a CD for my birthday, then I should be able to put it on any of my devices and listen to it for personal use. That makes sense to me. Yeah. That really makes sense because I own it. And I should be able to show that, you know, if somebody ever gives me a hard time over it, I have the CD at home. It's on my MP3 player. Here's the CD. I know. People be crazy. Yeah. All right. PayPal holding shares have jumped as much as 11% in their highly anticipated return to the NASDAQ after more than a decade owned by eBay, valuing the digital payment processor at about $52 billion. PayPal is a giant in the market it helped create. It processed 4 billion payments, totaling about $235 billion in 2014. But the online payments landscape has changed drastically since the company was snapped up, snapped up by eBay in 2002. Freed from eBay last week, PayPal is now expected to partner with other e-commerce sites and try to seize market shares from startups such as Stripe, Square, and Apple, which unveiled its own mobile payment service last year. For eBay, the separation allows the company to focus on its struggling e-commerce marketplace. PayPal shares soared to $42.55 in early trading eBay stock fell as much as 4.7%, valuing the company at about $32 billion. So in the split, really, uh, PayPal comes up on top, but eBay is still worth $32 billion. So in the divorce, I would say it's pretty, it's pretty fair. I, like to see, I would like to see where PayPal goes with this. Yeah. That would be great. One's going this way, the other one's going this way. Mm-hmm. Which we'll one see. will it be? Yeah, we'll see. Truth be told, I've always been an Amazon fan rather than an eBay fan. I've never actually shopped on eBay. And I, that's true. And yet, I find it annoying that I... Can I pay with PayPal on, on Amazon? Yeah, yeah. I use my Amazon... I do use my PayPal MasterCard. Does right. It have, but does it have actual PayPal processing? I, I would assume so. It will now. It, it can. It, it's it can free. Now. It's free to see other it's websites now. It's not their competitor. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Congratulations. U.S. Airline United operates a bug bounty scheme that rewards hackers for privately disclosing security flaws rather than sharing them online. It has given the maximum reward of a million flight miles worth worth dozens of trips to two people. Wow. Those lucky two people. One security expert said the scheme was a big step forward for online security. Security consultant Dr. Jessica Barker said schemes like this reward hackers for finding and disclosing problems in the right way. That makes the internet safer for all of us. Bug bounties are common in tech companies as they tend to understand online security a bit more, but other industries are catching up. That's a really good industry, the airline industry, for catching up like this because we've had previous stories where there have been um, security flaws. I I think that's really smart what they're doing because... Mm -hmm. Firstly, they get to find out their own security flaws. Sure. Like, and secondly, they're getting it for free. Well, it's not really for free. Air miles. Getting they're free giving, air miles. You're giving air miles. Like, what, what's not good about that? I think hacker has gotten a bad name for itself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hacker as a term or a label has gotten a bad name. But there's ethical hacking where you're, you're doing just that. You're finding 
flaws in systems and reporting them. Mm-hmm. And I, so to get a reward for that, I think is, yeah. I do actually cool. picture hackers wearing white hats when they're doing things like this. Do you so. think so? Yeah. Well, there's the white hat hackers. They're the good guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is that? <laughs> they're the good hackers. I'm picturing this as a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, there are some critics. Some critics of bug bounties say that they can discourage companies from hiring professional security staff because it's cheaper to offer hackers cash for disclosing bugs. Yeah, that's true, too. Hmm. But I still like the bug bounty. If I could find a bug in a system and get a reward for it, it it's a win-win all around. It Although, it, is it a bit of a catch-22 situation if, if that point is true? If I, as a, as a company, develop a website, for example, and something in my code is exploitable, and I'm relying on people from the outside to find those exploits and report them, isn't it possible then that I could be releasing code, releasing a, a website, for example, that is exploitable from a, a different angle mm-hmm. that those people may not find because it's they're seeing the public facing side well then a virus gets in and does something Works else that, yeah. i remember there was a news story we did a little while ago where there i think it was youtube had a flaw was it youtube where where you could put in a piece yeah, of delete code all and delete, the every delete every video every video on youtube starting with justin bieber and they pretty <laughs> just pretty much just shook his hand and said, "Hey, thanks, dude." They didn't give him a million air miles. I think it was a pathetic amount of cashola, like yeah. it was like they gave him like a hundred, uh, like a, a thousand bucks or something like that, or some crazy low amount for what he had discovered and disclosed responsibly. Right. Should have been he should have been set for life. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, at that point. Should have given him a job. Oh, sure. Be at least for, the minimum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. I like the way it goes. Bug bounties are the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> IBM is in the midst of a major transformation in its systems business as it moves away from x86. Part of that transformation involves refocusing the company's Linux strategy to be centered on IBM's power systems, an effort that Doug Balog, general manager of IBM Power Systems, is helping to lead. Balog said the power is still aiming to grab share from Intel Itanium-based and Oracle Spark-based systems, but that it's that's but that's not where the largest opportunity currently exists. In a recent interview, he said the real focus is the roughly $20 billion Linux serv- server market, which is where we're focused for growth. Balog said that the conversation IBM is having with organizations is about finding the data workloads that today are having challenges with ingesting information or business insights with analytics. IBM is also very focused on making sure that power is the best place to run Linux, actively putting code into the upstream to make sure it's optimized on the power platform. There you go. A little piece of Linux news to chew on. Where has IBM been? They're developing these super duper fast chips that you mentioned the other week and now uh, really trying to tackle the Linux Data center. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Several large retailers have shut down their online photo printing websites following a possible data breach at a third-party photo service. Walmart Canada, Costco, and Sam's Club are some of the retailers that use Staples-owned PNI digital media to run their photo printing services. Vancouver-based PNI is investigating a possible credit card data security issue, Staples said in a statement issued last week. A message posted on Walmart Canada's Photo Centre website says the photo printing service has been disabled as a precaution while the investigation continues. The retailer also suggests that the Photo Centre customers monitor their credit card transactions closely. A message posted on Costco Canada's suspended photo page says its customers' credit card data is not at risk because the third-party vendor doesn't process user payments. Many retails, retailers in the States, including CVS Health and Rite Aid, have also taken their online photo services offline in connection with the PNI investigation. The security issue um, at the third party service isn't affecting each retailer's other websites, only the photo printing ones. But again, that's a scary sort of situation. I don't know. I mean, it's credit card information, so it's not personal images, but 
just a breach like yeah, that they're not is really dude. telling us everything though are they no I mean, okay well if they're not processing payment information and it was only credit card data that was stolen then why does it matter and why do we shut down our site there's got to be more here yeah. that we're not being told and just to be clear this is not just canada uh, we're based in canada so our reporting tends to be from canada but this is also in the united states as well that uh, was affected by this what is it that was really compromised that is forcing all these big retailers to shut down the service entirely are the pictures compromised mm-hmm. private photos that have been sent in for photo finishing now things like that coming up on a soon to happen i'm sure um episode of try it buy it i will be showing a printer that i mean really would take this out of the mix right right now you're using a third party photo printing yeah. so you're sending your images out online and printing them onto paper i guess picking them up later why not just print from home Right? Why not? Save yourself the trouble. Yeah. But it's so complicated to do that, Sasha. (laughs) And the cost is astronomical. (laughs) Yeah. As she said. That's right. Subscribe to Try It, Buy It. Try Try It, Buy It. Dot TV. That's right. Yeah. A big thanks this week to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you found a news story you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the Category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Dermatis. Thank you, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome to the show. If you're new here, especially welcome to you. Yes. Uh, We do have a couple of names here, uh, people who are just newly, freshly registered on our website. We've got uh, Grumpy PC and Trojan Spike. My 3KE. I think it's Mike. Mike. Uh, Scatterbrain. Sendoa Red. Yugati 2D. And Topher. Also available in 3D. Yes. Welcome. And uh, hey, if you'd like to register on our website, it's absolutely free. Category5.tv. You'll be able to participate in some cool stuff. It was mentioned earlier on that uh, one of the cool things that Whiskey Zero found on our Patreon profile is that you will win viewer points for supporting the show. And that's a cool way to be able to uh, work your way up the ladder as far as our top 10 viewers and be able to get some extra coupons and some fun things. Uh, Category5.tv. You've got to be, <laughs> pardon me, got to be registered in order to participate as far as viewer points go. Yes. Cool. How do you like my shirt? It's very blue. Very blue. It's very plain. Have you ever thought, hey, if only I had the ability to put really cool sayings. I've got so many great <laughs> sayings in my head. I come up with new ones every day, and I think I should have a shirt for them. What do yes. you think of that? I would love to do that. Well, then go to cat5.tv slash shirt. That's all you got to do. Okay. And we will uh, get you that shirt printed for you if you've got a great slogan. Absolutely no minimum. So if you only want to print one, I guess you do. Ha- I guess the absolute minimum is one. Yeah. Because otherwise there isn't a shirt. We can't do 0.5 shirts, although tank tops are available. Um, but check it out, cat5.tv slash shirt. If you've got a cool thing that you want to say on a shirt, you can do one. If you've got a sports team and you want to get shirts for everybody, you can do 20. If you've got uh, something going on with uh, an organization that you're working with, print out 20 shirts and take them with you. Great way to yeah, get some it. cool stuff. Great prices, really fast shipping. Uh, and, free shipping is available in a lot of cases as well. And you support the show. You do. You support Category 5 TV. Cat5.tv slash shirt and get it printed. Yeah. It's not plain and boring like mine. Or mine. Viewer questions, let's jump into it. I saw Leland in the chat room asking some stuff there, sent me a PM, and I posted that over to, to uh, Kelsey as well. So, uh, I'll so let you yes. take it. So, we got some Leland asks When I move your viewer support vendor purchase links to my books, bookmarks tour, to, toolbar, sorry, does it still give that cat, give Cat5 TV the advertising credits? For example, eBay, Amazon, and all the other great stores that I use daily anyway. But I don't have time to go through your site each visit. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, that's cool. Great idea. 
And I don't, I don't mean to take part of the show and, and be all about, hey, contribute to Category 5 because we're not doing a fundraiser today. Uh, but this is a question from Leland. I appreciate it. I do appreciate that you want to support the show in this really kind of funky way by buying stuff at stores that you're going to buy from anyway. We talk about Amazon and how many times did we buy something on Amazon? You might as well throw a percentage of that sale toward Category 5. It doesn't cost you any more, but it helps support the show. So let's jump over to our website, category5.tv. Go to support us and affiliate links. And yeah, buddy, here's what you do. Okay, so we're here in Canada, so I can take Amazon.ca and I can drag it up there. Now I've got this cool little Amazon.ca link that actually, if you notice it on my mouse over, it has our code. See that? Cat Tech mm. TV. So if I click that, it's actually going to take me to Amazon.ca and it's going to give us the, uh, the margin. If you're in the UK, you can grab the co.uk link and there you go. Now it's got our, it's a different um, tag for each region. But we're basically everywhere. So eBay, uh, Amazon, all over the world. We've also got some other ones like B&H Photo Video, Tube Tape. Uh, we've got Roku devices. Probably not something you'd drag onto there. But hey, Amazon, great suggestion. There you go. Amazon, eBay. And now, having dragged those there, when you click on it, it's going to actually give us that support. Nice and easy. How cool is that? Thank you for the suggestion, Leland. That's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. Cheers. Um, the next one comes from Voodoo Sandman. He hey, asks, Voodoo Sandman. He asks, whatever became of the forum? Whatever became of the forum? Oh, that was it. Well, yeah, okay. Well, we used to have a forum, a community forum, and uh, it, uh, it was closed down with one of our website updates a long time ago because it's just so much to maintain, and we have to always have people watching it and, and moderating it and... Uh, we loved having that community aspect, but now we focus specifically on the chat room. We've got Facebook as well. If you want to go to cat5.tv slash Facebook, you can get in there, and it's a way that you can communicate back and forth with the, the team here at Category 5. Uh, we're on Google+, Plus, cat5.tv slash G+. All these links are on our website. Um, and uh, Twitter, same thing. I mean, twitter.com slash category5tv. Yes. Um, fact is... When we started up, there were none of these services. They didn't exist, mm -hmm. right? Nowadays, it's more social to be social and, and to participate in services that are already out there and available for us. It's so much better to be able to follow us on Twitter, for example, and get the show update that, hey, we're going live in 10 minutes. Hope you can join us. Here's what the show's going to be about than to have to log into a forum that is specific to us. It's like branching out and becoming part of something that's a lot bigger than we are. Um, so that's why we use social media now instead of yeah. our own personal locked-in kind of forum. I love the idea of a forum. It's just not practical for us. But yeah. uh, but thank you very much for the question. I hope that is cool with you. And they do. They did continue on to say that uh, they would like to link up with other viewers that share an interest in Arduino. 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 Yeah. Um, micro so stuff. we're gonna put your is this person's email address in the show notes so that if you want you can connect. Yeah, with how about him. this? Everybody who's interested in Arduino, pop us an email live at category five TV and just say, hey, let's uh, communicate with uh, with Voodoo Sandman, mm -hmm. and uh, and we'll get you guys in touch with one another, and that way you know we can still have that community aspect. But get into our chat room, Voodoo Sandman. It's open 24-7. Yes. It's on our website, category5.tv. You don't have to install any programs to run it. Um, you can just do it right through our website. You can install a program and just connect to it on irc.freenode.net. It's uh, category5 on Freenode. And then you can participate at any time. And, and uh, yes. people will be there that want to talk Arduino with you. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. This next one comes from Bill777. Hey, Bill. They say, I see that Point Linux 3.0 is out, and is it as good as the last version? As good as. That's a toughie. Point Linux, I, I love what Peter does with it, and uh, it's a fantastic distro. That's what I'm running on my computer, Debian-based. It's fantastic. Yeah. Point Linux 3, though, is based on a newer version of Mate, or Mate. And the problem with the newer version of Mate is this. Doesn't support Compiz. So if by better than you're hoping for Compiz, what's Compiz? What Compiz, is? Compiz lets me do this. Oh. 
Comp is lets me do this. That's so fancy. It's fancy, but it's also productive. And if you're like me, who, let's say you run a TV show where quite often we have to zoom in on things. I mm. use that zoom like crazy. So I can't go with version three because I need that comp is to be able to get that zoom so that you can see what I'm talking about when you're looking at it on your phone. Yeah. So it's a tough call. I mean, it's, it's going to be more robust. It's going to have newer packages, but it's lacking comp is. So if you don't care about comp is, and a lot of people don't, I do, um, it, uh, it would be quite good for you. I also, you know, I, I look at some of the other distros that are out there too. Um, as far as the Arc branch goes, um, I've really been enjoying Antergos. Uh, it's a, a neat uh, Arc derivative, basically Arc with a really easy installer. So if you can think about Arc, but easy to install and some added bonus features and things like that. But it's pretty uh, bleeding edge. So you get a lot of the, the latest and greatest stuff as would be the case with, with Arc Linux. So, uh, but yeah, Point Linux, still love what they're doing. Uh, unfortunately, it's gone, uh, it's progressed in a direction that is not where we had hoped for it to go in that vein because we're so reliant on CompIs. Yeah. But it's a dead project. CompIs is dead. And I have to face that at some point. <sighs> Poor Robbie. I know. I really like being able to zoom in on stuff. Oh, baby, why? I like it a lot. I know. I like being able to do fancy stuff. I like being able to take my chat window and drag it to over here. <laughs> it's just productive. I don't know. Moving along before I break out and cry. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, <sighs> Garby thinks Wayland's going to be so much better than Comp is. Well, I have yet to see. What's Wayland? This. Wayland is like a different window manager completely. Replaces X and everything. But I have yet to see them introduce a Zoom feature that's anywhere comparable. Does, to does it do the same thing? No. It does better things and more modern things and works on better, more modern hardware, but it doesn't do the same stuff. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. You let me know when Wayland has Zoom. Okay. And good Zoom. I want good Zoom. I don't want none of this highlight where my mouse is pointed. I want to be able to Zoom in responsively. The next question before the <laughs> next question comes from Thorneo. Thorneo, one of those. Um, how can I get category five on my new Cody XBMC install? I have most of the other shows I'd like to watch but yours. As a side note, my Roku stopped working and I had an I had an old PC here, so I just started using that to watch all of my shows. Yes, it does have Linux installed. Nice. Uh, running Linux Mint Debian edition. Uh, okay. Two. How similar is the interface on Kodi to XBMC? All I have is XBMC. Can I show you on there? Because I think it's probably going to still operate pretty much the same. Let's jump over to XBMC here. This is going to confuse you if you're watching me on XBMC right now. Because it's going to be trippy. <laughs> okay, it's, it's actually pretty easy to do, but XBMC or Kodi never really made it intuitive. That's all. So let's take a look. Uh, videos, files, you, you would typically add your files like this, right? So you go files and then add videos and you would browse to a video. Once you recognize, of course, if you go to our website, category5.tv, go to the RSS feeds, you'll see all the links for our RSS feeds. But once you realize that rss.cat5.tv slash whatever quality you want, SD, LD, or HD, or MP3, uh, dot .rss, those are our feeds, right? So if you want high definition video, it's hd.rss. If you want low definition video, very, very tiny, very pixelated, but very fast and low bandwidth usage, uh, LD, low def. So with that knowledge in mind, when I click to browse for my file, I'm not gonna browse for a local file, I'm instead gonna go rss colon slash slash rss dot cat 5tv what do we want? SD? Sure. Standard de definition. SD.RSS. So that's where you would change this to LD, HD, SD. Okay? And it looks exactly like that. Then when I hit enter, you'll see that it's automatically detected Category 5 Technology TV, and I can hit OK. And then when I click on it, you see all the most recent videos. So I can click on that. Here it goes. Loading it up. Probably milking all our bandwidth for all it's worth. But it does yeah. work. So there you have it. 
So that's all there is to it. It's just using an RSS feed. That's how you add an RSS feed to, and there, there it goes there. There's two of me. Um, that's all there is to it, adding it to, uh, to XBMC or Cody. Um, and hopefully, I, I would expect that one day we'll, we'll actually introduce an XBMC or Cody um, plugin as well. That would be cool. Thanks for the question. That's all the time that we have, if you can believe, though. Flies by, doesn't it? I didn't see it on the screen. It's been fun. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Once again, our website is www.category5.tv. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I uh, hope that you'll join us again next week. Yes, that would be nice. A lot of fun weeks uh, ahead for you. Uh, get on to our Patreon profile. You'll see some of the things that we're trying to achieve and some of the goals that we have. One of the things uh, you'll be happy to know, we're finally going to get you in the intro video. Yes. We've got contributors who have supported us enough to make that happen. So uh, that's going to be cool. We're going to revamp our intro. Uh, also, we're working toward doing more awesome product reviews. These things cost money and we want to be able to do it for you. Uh, so keep those Patreon contributions yeah. coming and we're going to make sure that we review some really cool stuff. We'll take your suggestions. And if we can, we're going to do some amazing reviews for you over the next little while. So thanks, everybody, for your support. Have a wonderful week, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Yes. See you next Tuesday. Bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.